Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and we have a major update in the ongoing war between Epic Games and Apple. And if you do not know about this one already, this is an ongoing tale. And I'm going to start you up from the beginning, and then we'll end with today's news, which is huge, potentially. So, we start at the beginning. Epic Games, way back in August of 2020, added their own in-app payment option to buy V-Bucks, the currency in Fortnite. And Apple basically immediately kicked them off the App Store. So that is where everything started. Now, this was quite obviously uh, planned by Epic Games. They had a lawsuit immediately ready to go. So their, their app was yanked for being in violation because it had its own in-app purchase system. Apple yanked it out because they want to protect their 30% commission. And then Epic Games sued them immediately. So a couple of days later, Apple kind of... I would interpret this one as kind of an overreach or a dick move. Uh, what they did is they basically suspended Apple's or uh, Unreal Engine and Epic's development account, making it so that they couldn't update uh, Unreal Engine. So all Unreal Engine developers that are working on Apple platforms would ultimately be screwed for future updates and so on and so forth. And that seemed like, again, a bit of an overreach. And well, it was an overreach. The judge in the case, the same judge, by the way, that made the ruling today uh, came out that it, it was too far. Um, they, they couldn't do it. They, they did a, a temporary uh, injunction preventing uh, Apple from stopping uh, Epic Games from supporting Unreal Engine. Now, at the same time, though, they did still have Fortnite and I think all their other games yanked from the App Store. So this wasn't an injunction against that. It was against them pulling their developer account because of the harm it would do to people like you and I, Unreal Engine developers, that work on those platforms. So that was uh, August the 25th of 2020. And then on September the 8th, Apple sued Epic Games. And this one was kind of, they basically, they say they lost the money from the new in-app purchase system for all the people that bought V-Bucks. So there was another lawsuit that went on at the same time. Well, we have uh, some closure on this particular suit. And basically, at the end of the day, Epic mostly won, Apple kind of won. Let's see what happened. But a few things happened in the world before that. In the meantime, back in November, we all won. You and I, small developers, if you made less than a million dollars last year, your commission on the Apple Store went from 30% to 15%. That was definitely a PR move. Uh, definitely nice for people to see, though. And you can 100% thank Epic Games for this. If there wasn't the pressure, and it wasn't just Epic Games, they're being targeted by a number of different countries. Facebook is going after Apple for their um, their commission rates and, and their policies for the App Store and so on. Uh, there's a couple of email applications and other applications out there that are going after Apple. So it's not just Epic Games taking them on, but they're getting a bit of a PR black eye. And this was the kind of move they did to sort of help alleviate that. No matter the reasoning behind it, us as small developers, we won. So that was nice. And then we've got, uh, let's see, August the 31st, uh, Korea passed a law that said Apple and Google must develop, must allow developers to use other payment systems. That is kind of huge. So basically, uh, Korea, South Korea, stepped in and said, yeah, you have to allow in-app purchases from other companies, which is exactly what Epic Games did in the first place with Fortnite that got them kicked off the Apple Store. So as a result of Korea passing this new law, uh, Apple came out and said, oh, sorry, Epic Games came out and said, okay, then please put Fortnite back on the App Store. And Apple said, no, screw you. And that's where we're at. So that was the story was today, this actually happened yesterday, this, this whole uh, Apple shooting down uh, Fortnite's reinstatement on the App Store. And you're up to date, almost. And then we now have today's news. Now, I am not a lawyer, so I'm going to go ahead and just use The Verge's interpretation of this. So this is from The Verge. I will link this in the linked article down below, as long as links to all the other stories in this saga. So if you want to catch up from the very beginning, I've done videos on pretty much every aspect of this up to uh, Korea passing the law last week. I didn't cover that. But uh, today we have a ruling. And as you can see from the headline, a major win for Epic Games and Fortnite. Kinda. Uh, so... Uh, the judge in this case, basically, this is exactly the same judge, by the way, uh, since the very beginning. So the person who uh, granted the uh, temporary injunction, making it so that Unreal Engine could be supported, same judge. Same judge in this story, 
Uh, Yvonne Gonzalez Rogers issued a permanent injunction, not a temporary, a permanent injunction in the case, uh, handling a major setback to Apple's App Store model and bringing months of legal jousting to a conclusion. Now, we use the word conclusion in air quotes because this is the American legal system. It's not done. It's going to be appealed and it's going to probably go to the Supreme Court. And then it might be kicked back down to the uh, lower courts again, whatever. But right now, under the new order, Apple is permanently restrained and enjoined from prohibiting developers from including in their apps and their metadata buttons, external links, or other calls to action that direct customers to purchase mechani purchasing mechanisms, in addition to in-app purchasing and communicating with customers through points of contact obtained voluntarily from customers through account registration within the app. That's huge, actually. That one, uh, that part about contacting customers and, and pulling their information, that is another thing that Apple recently tried to pull. And I don't know that that was necessarily part of this lawsuit initially, but that is interesting. So basically app developers can now solicit voluntarily information from you, uh, say, would you like to use our payment system instead of their payment system and provide links to external stores or whatever. This is one of those things that um, Amazon Kindle did sort of as a bit of a workaround. And you got to know Amazon Kindle, um, Disney Plus, Netflix, so on. They're all like just doing dances of joy right now because they can just set up their own payment system, offer a cheaper version and Apple is no longer basically banned from doing that. So in short, iOS apps must be allowed uh, to direct users to payment options beyond those offered by Apple. Injunction is scheduled to take effect in 90 days, which is the stem September, the, the sort of, bleh, I can't speak now, December the 9th, and then we get to the American legal system, unless it is enjoined by a higher court. So it is possible in between now and December 9th that a higher level court um, could kind of kick this one back to the lower courts or overturn it. So it's never over. But as it stands right now, Epic Games pretty much won. What they originally did in violation of the end user agreement of Apple is no longer something Apple can dictate. So when they offer their own in-app purchases, that is now going to be on December the 9th. Apple is not going to be allowed to stop that. However, they are uh, in their rights to stop it from before, which is a little weird. But so this lawsuit right here, where Apple sued Epic Games for the lost money from them switching to their own in-app purchases. Well, Apple did win that portion of the case. And it's weird because we're talking three and a half million dollars. So they're going to get three and a half million dollars of loss commission that Epic Games made while they were in violation of the EULA. So in that regards, Apple won that part of the lawsuit. So they get three and a half million dollars. So what that actually says is Epic Games had their game up for a day running in-app purchases through their own store. So that's 30% of their revenue. They made like 11 or $12 million in that single day through their own app store. Wow. Uh, but basically, they now have to pay uh, Apple that $3.5 million, which is kind of funny because $3.5 million is probably what each company paid for their legal representation in court today. So... Uh, they technically won the breach of contract part of the lawsuit and they're owed three and a half million dollars. But I think at the end of the day, nobody cares. In terms of the ruling, um, we've got uh, Judge Gonzalez Rogers explaining her thinking on the issue in greater detail. They said that um, relevant market here is digital mobile game transactions, not gaming generally and not Apple's own internal operating systems related to the App Store. Under the market definition, the court cannot ultimately conclude that Apple is a monopolist under either federal or state antitrust laws. Now, Apple is going to be extremely happy to have that said. Now, it's also not saying that they aren't. Uh, nonetheless, the trial did show that Apple is engaging in anti-competitive conduct under California's competition laws. So that is where they lost. Scrolling down below the ad, uh, Apple came out. And their, their pitch of how, they, how this happened is, is interesting, Spin. Uh, today, the court has affirmed that we've known all along the App Store is not in violation of antitrust law. Well, no, they, they actually said no, not not. But anyways, Apple faces rigorous competition in every segment in which we do business, and we believe customers and developers choose us because our products and services are the best in the world. We remain committed to ensuring the App Store is a safe and trusted marketplace. Literally, no comment at all about the anti-competitive behavior they just got caught on. So, um, no real comment there. And interestingly enough, Epic has not issued a comment as of this point in time. Um, so it will be interesting exactly where this goes. Now, if you really want to get into the legalese, the full document is, is available here. Uh, again, I will link to the Verge article. If you want to read the whole thing, uh, have fun. Uh, I don't really want to. And it's going to have significant impacts outside of Apple. Google's already facing a similar lawsuit from Epic Games. And that's basically, now you've got, um, 
not prior art, but you, you've got established case law. You've got uh, another case that was proven in this situation. It's going to make that a whole lot harder for Google to win on the Google Play Store. Now, Google has a couple more arguments in that they allow sideloading and alternative app stores, such as the um, Samsung Store and so on. So they may have a, a bit more of a case than Apple ever did, but this doesn't help Google at all. And really, because it didn't come down to a monopolistic, it came down to um, anti-competitive leveraging. I think Google is probably going to lose as a result of this as well. But I'm not a lawyer, so do not listen to me for legal advice. Even though I can kind of sit there and go, I told you so, because this actually all turned out exactly how I predicted. And we've been waiting for uh, the one and only Tim Sweeney to make a comment on this. And as of when I started this video, let's do a refresh, see if he said anything yet. Okay, yeah, we finally got an update. Okay, so eight minutes ago, today's ruling isn't a win for developers or consumers. Epic is fighting for fair comp competition among in-app payment methods and app stores for a billion customers. Fortnite will return to the iOS app store when and where Epic can offer in-app purchases and fair competition with Apple in-app payments, passing along the savings to consumers. Uh, thanks to everyone who put so much time and effort into the battle over fair competition on digital platforms. And thanks especially to the court for managing a very complex case on a speedy timeline. And by the way, yes, a year in legal terms is fast, which is very, very, strong, very uh, odd, but, and we will fight on. And then we've got also uh, a little bit more about the whole Fortnite California thing. So California, sorry, California, uh, South Korea, with South Korea saying, okay, Apple, you can't do this anymore. Uh, then, uh, then Epic's like, no, no, well, we should be allowed to come back on. And uh, yeah, so there's still a fight there. And Tim Sweeney's earlier comment was, like Apple's attempt to retaliate against all Unreal Engine cost customers, remember that was uh, this injunction way back in the when, uh, well, they're kind of doing that again right now. So this isn't any means over, but right now, let's just say, if you want to pick who's winning and who's losing, uh, Epic Games are winning, big time. And this could have a huge ramification on the industry. But at the same time, uh, there, there's, there's still legal dipshittery that Apple could pull. Like they could say, okay, yeah, you can use your own external payment system, but we want to have 30% commission on that payment. And then you're going to be in like a legal battle over if they're allowed to do that, which I got to imagine they won't win, but Apple have got a lot of moves left at play. But right now, today, uh, Epic won in a big way, in theory, uh, but they did lose three and a half million dollars when they were breached a contract. But again, uh, to these two companies, three and a half million dollars is like a nickel in the couch. So not a huge deal, but I'm curious what you think of this whole development, this lawsuit in general. Good for consumers, good for developers. Let me know. Comments down below and I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.